Howdy folks, hope you're all having a good one, and welcome back to World of Tanks with the Mighty Jingles. So, regular viewers will be aware that there's a certain light tank player who makes regular appearances around here by the name of Aurorix78, who is, at the moment, the king of light tanks. And there have been several challengers thrown their efforts into the ring over the last couple of months, and some of them have come close, but Aurorix is still the king. A lot of those previous battles, and I'm not saying there's been anything wrong with this, because a good battle's a good battle, regardless of the map or the matchmaking spread, but in a lot of those previous attempts at dethroning Aurorik, we've seen top-tier light tanks on maps like Malinovka and Prokhorovka that are especially kind to light tank players. That is not the case today. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, this is Zins V2 in the ERC AMX, a tier 5 light tank in a tier 7 battle here on Mines, the smallest map in the game. The odds are already stacked heavily against him. Let's see how he handles himself. Battle starts. He's not the only light tank in this match, there's a setter there for example, but the setter's tier 7. Zins isn't. There's also a WZ-131 on the team, also a tier 7 light tank. Oh, he's already managed to get his first spot, enemy Chaffee, crossing the open ground over there. Now the ELC does have a fairly powerful gun for a tier 5 light tank, it is a 90mm gun. But it's not mounted in an actual turret. It doesn't rotate 360 degrees, in fact I think the frontal fire arc on this thing is only actually 60. Also, the gun elevation is pretty bad. As you can see there, just on a slight downward slope, unable to get the gun pointing at a target. And despite the, I want to say recent buff, even though it was at least a year ago, but despite the buff to uh, lower tier, oh there's his first kill, nice, uh, lower tier tank hit points in order to make them a bit more competitive, uh, this thing still has less than 500 hit points. And minor spoiler alert, he's going to have significantly less than 500 hit points by the time this battle comes to a conclusion. So he knows that there are some enemies, there's one, on the island down to the south. Oh, there goes half of his health in a single hit. <laughs> He's kind of committed now though. I mean the ELC is a very small target, it was unfortunate that he took a hit at all there, but well he did. But he's made it down to well, I suppose you could classify this as enemy territory in the island here, down to the south, with the WZ-131. He's taken a slightly safer spotting position. There's a couple of friendly tanks on the island to the north. P-43, Panzer IV, as well as that setter. But they need to spot targets for those guys, otherwise they're just wasting their time being here. Which is why Zins moves up to a much, much more aggressive proximity spotting location here. I think it's fairly safe to say that Zins does kind of miscalculate just exactly how small his tank is and just how much gun depression the VK3001H over there has because he took a hit there and he's now on 72 health and he absolutely definitely cannot afford to take a single other hit. He takes out the VK, but the VK is not alone on this corner. There's a T3485 over there as well. I think it's also safe to say that the WZ-131 overestimates just exactly how much support his teammates can give him when he disappears around the corner and out of direct line of fire, so I don't know if it was worth the spotting. Well, I do know, I was just being generous to him. It was not worth the spotting, because the idea is not to drive around the corner out of line of fire of anybody who can support you and just die pointlessly, it was to bait them into doing this, coming around the corner where your teammates can shoot them. Which is exactly what Zins is doing. He's basically sitting here as bait, saying, come on, come and have a go if you think you're hard enough. It is at more or less this point, however, where I think Zins suddenly realises, hang on, all of those guys on the island to the north, where are they? <laughs> uh, because the Panzer 4S has moved over the river, and the P-43, if you look on the map, he's burying himself right in the southern border. He's not actually in a position to shoot anything around this corner because there's a massive, dirty, great big rock in the way. So this is suddenly an extra... I mean, it was always an extremely dangerous position, but it's a position where there's nobody able to do any shooting at anything that comes around the corner other than Zins himself. The P-43 can't help, although the setter is now moved and might 
Uh, no, no, the setter moved and is now dead. <laughs> Killed by the T3485 that Zins has been proximity spotting. And Zins is thinking, yeah, screw this. Um, the P43 back there is no use to him alive. Uh, the Panzer 4S is pinned behind a rock and can't do anything. The team are basically getting slaughtered. It's time to get the hell out of here. Well, Zins is going to be next. So, putting as much distance as possible between himself and any enemies who could uh, do to him what the T-3485 did to the setter as it tried to do this, he falls back to his previous position. I wonder if the P-43 is going to take the hint, or is he just going to still sit there? Well, there goes the Panzer 4S. They're only two kills behind. I mean, it's not that bad. Until you look at the top of the screen and you see the hit point difference between the two teams. The enemy team have more than double the remaining hit points of Zinza's team. And this is really disappointing, because this would have evened the odds a little. I mean, the IS over there was actually burning. Unfortunately, he wasn't able to finish him off. Notice what he does here is he's attempting to support the P-43 over there, who didn't bail out when he should have. Because you can see through the bush, that means that anybody that you shoot at through the bush will also see you. So he pulls back so the bush goes opaque and then manoeuvres to get into cover behind the rock anyway, because he did get spotted. The old trick with the bush only works at things that have a direct line of fire between you and the bush that you're using for concealment. If there's anybody off to the side, even if you're not aware that they're there, they will still have a clear line of sight and spot you when you fire. So he used the old pulling back from the bush trick, but didn't rely on it just in case there was somebody off to the side, like on the hill in the middle of the map, for example, we were going to see him anyway. And once it was confirmed that he had been seen, when the Sixth Sense alert went off, he didn't stick around behind the rock because, well, seconds after he bugged out, the rock had got pummeled by artillery, and that would have killed him. So, with the P-43 down to the south dead, and artillery zeroed in on the rock that he was hiding behind, he's got no option but to fall back to here. Here's his problem. Well, he's got a lot of problems, but his most immediate problem is that, aside from him, the only other actual tank left alive on the team is the M10 over there, and he's been pinned down by the enemy LTG. So his immediate objective is to try to keep the artillery in the game, and he does spot the T-3485, but doesn't finish it. Fortunately, however, the fair 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 is capable of defending itself, and takes out the T-3485, not before the T-34 was able to spot both it and the AMX-13 AM artillery, resulting in the deaths of both the friendly artillery. And even though Zins is able to even the odds a little by taking out the enemy IS, and again, doing it without being spotted, they are still in an extremely precarious situation, with only 390 hit points remaining between the two surviving friendlies. It's only Zins here who really has any kind of freedom of action, because the M10 RBFM over there is continually being spotted by the T-78 and the rocks above him and the LTG in the village in front of him. And it's really only a matter of time before somebody on the enemy team, here it comes, puts their man pants on and does something about it. And that was a double disaster, because, well, not only is the M10 dead, and all 72 hit points worth of Zins here is the only thing left alive on the team, but he wasn't able to take out the T-78, who cliff-dived nearly killed itself trying to take out the M-10. Oh, that was a hit, by the way. I mean, he fired blind at the position of the LTG, and you didn't see the shell impact, which means it hit the target. And because you can't see the target, you don't see the impact. So he definitely scored a hit on the LTG. Can I get another one? Yes, he can. It was really unfortunate that he wasn't able to kill the T-78 though, which basically almost killed itself when it cliff-dived onto the M10. But it's not often you see a 90mm shell ricochet off a T-78. That is, however, exactly what happened. There's the T-25AT. He's a one-shot kill. If you can get the shot. I think the LTG may also be a one-shot kill. I know the T-78 is a one-shot kill. It's still five against one, though. Oh, oh, come on, come on. Got him. Nice. There goes the T-78. Doesn't hang around just in case the LTG spotted him doing it. Did not get spotted. Notice what he did there. Just in case he did get spotted, he bugged out in the direction that he wants the enemy team to think he's going. And then once he confirmed that he had not been spotted, he headed back. And there goes the LTG. You sneaky little French bastard. <laughs> Definitely got spotted there though. 
does a bit of ducking and diving and bobbing and weaving to avoid getting smashed by artillery and almost gets smashed by artillery. He now has one hit point. <laughs> this is now officially the closest World of Tanks battle you have ever seen. The T25AT now knows that all he has to do is keep him spotted and the artillery will win the game for him. He eats the shot with his tracks. <laughs> takes out the T-25 because he had to, otherwise artillery would have won the game for him. And then activates the zoom button and gets the hell out of there as artillery continues to rain shots down on him. He reacquired the bishop there, but he, well, I mean the bishop knows he got spotted. He's pulled back into cover, so he doesn't really have a shot at him. He could go after the bishop right now, of course, and it would probably work. He could probably make his way across the open ground to the left. But there's probably at least an even chance that the bishop might spot him doing that, and even if the bishop doesn't take him out, the gorilla might. So he wants to know where the gorilla is before he commits to anything. So he's heading up to the hill. He's reasonably sure, based on the trajectory of the shots that he saw coming from wherever the gorilla was, that he's not on the hill. He might still be back in the enemy base, and that's what he's checking out here. Doesn't see anything, doesn't get spotted in return. We're now going to go and confirm the location of the bishop. Because the bishop is probably not keen to move out, knowing that there's a light tank lurking around somewhere. So he was down here. Yep, there he is. And he has the shot, and the bishop doesn't. Doesn't take him out, though. Gets spotted, obviously. Does not hang around. Wait. Ah, no, wait. There's the gorilla. Okay. This is good. Well, not necessarily good, because the gorilla's probably turned its gun around right now to point in this direction. So just to make sure, he peeks out and confirms that the gorilla is not turning its gun around to point in this direction. The gorilla's thinking, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, I've been spotted, I'm in open ground, I need to get into cover. And so he uses this opportunity to ensure that that does not happen. He knows where the bishop is, he got spotted, doesn't really matter. Well, he knows where the bishop was, he's just going to confirm. Yep, still there. He's not sticking his nose out around the corner because that's exactly what the bishop is hoping he's going to do. And, well, with one hit point remaining and 13 millimeters of armor, the bishop wouldn't even need to score a direct hit in order to kill him. So, he needs to keep that bishop guessing. He also needs to take this relatively slow and easy, otherwise he could wreck the tank. <laughs> that was a controlled descent, unlike the uncontrolled descent that we saw the T-78 doing earlier, which nearly caused him to wreck himself. He has options though. I, I can't believe I'm saying this in a battle where the enemy team have 130 times the remaining hit points <laughs> of the tank that we're following, but he does have options. Oh, it's actually unfortunate that he spotted the bishop there, because if the bishop had six cents, then, well, part of Zinza's plan has now been scuppered. Because the bishop is naturally going to be expecting him to work his way around the rocks, taking the least likely to be spotted route. So if I was that bishop, I would have my gun turned around and pointing back in the direction of the enemy base, because that's the most obvious way that a light tank is going to try to sneak up on you from. Which is of course why Zins didn't do that, but if the bishop did have sixth sense and realised that he'd been spotted, that could be bad. But then again, that's also why Zins fired a shot from that direction to make him turn around. <laughs> He thought, well, if the bishop has six cents, when I spotted him, it will have gone off. He will know that I'm coming around from this direction. If he doesn't have six cents, he's either going to be facing the wrong way, or I could put a shot between the buildings, make him turn around into that direction, then go around the side and, well, do that. <laughs> and that's exactly what happened. That was, quite frankly, amazing. Kolobanov's medal, eight kills in a bottom tier light tank on the smallest map in the game with one hit point. Auroric, I'm not saying you have to hand the crown over, but you might want to consider at least letting Zin sit in the throne on Tuesdays. <laughs> <laughs> and I can't wait to see what everybody thought of that one. It's customary at this point for me to say something like, I hope you all enjoyed today's video, but I won't bother because I know you all did. And as always, take care, and I'll catch you next time.